So Wahoo have just released their new power pedal. There's no surprise here because they also released a cheeky little teaser image last year showing that they were going to do this but today here we have it they've been working on this since they acquired speedplay a few years ago and today we're going to look at the pros the cons how they stack up against the other power pedals out there and the other power systems out there and whether basically they're worth buying so we'll start with a super quick unboxing we all know boxes are boring so we'll make this quick but as boxes go it comes with a super classic wahoo-esque box with that magnet connection that they always have and to be fair it is a really nice box but anyway let's crack on So straight out of the box, you can see the actual pedal system looks the same as the Zero pedals that they released last year, but obviously you've now got the power pods here and you can see that they're already illuminating up, which is quite nice to see that they come with a bit of battery. Comes with the same cleats, so they're cross compatible. The same set of shoe spacers, and then I can also see here you've got the other options to make it fit different profiles of shoes, so that's all the same also. All the bolts you need to attach the cleats to your shoes. A few more spaces here to change the stack height. And then you've got a few shims here to change your Q factor, which is basically the distance from your pedal to the bottom bracket, vaguely. And then in these various little bags, you've got the charger. So you can see that this runs off a normal USB, and then that's a splitter cable that goes to two USB-Cs that then plug into these little units at the back here which then obviously connect to the pedal. And you can just see here, you've got these obvious metal contacts that just slide into place like that, and then that's gonna charge away, and you can do both pedals at, oh, wrong way, the same time. So a nice, easy click charge system with one USB cable, nice and simple. And as always, a couple of product information booklets in there too. So let's get into the nitty gritty of the features. So most importantly, they are accurate between plus or minus 1%. So that is up there with the best power pedals out there. In fact, power systems out there as a whole. So these are gonna be about as accurate as you can measure your power out there on the bike. And they're gonna come in both single and dual sided power options. So the single sided is just gonna read your left leg's power and it's gonna read that within that 1% accuracy, but then just double that data. So it's still really good for training, but it's not gonna give you that ultimate left right power. So if you're recovering from a particular leg injury or you need to get that specific data to improve your pedal stroke then the dual sided is the best way to go but obviously the caveat to that is that the dual sided is more expensive so that comes in at 850 pounds and the single sided comes in at 550 so it's quite a big difference in price there but i guess fundamentally quite a big difference in data if you want that accuracy and we'll talk about how these prices sit against other pedal power systems and general power systems a little bit later on. So within each power pod, you've got a lithium ion battery that's gonna give you once fully charged 75 hours of use. And a nice touch is if you're already in the Wahoo ecosystem and you've got a Wahoo head unit like an element bolt or Rome, then the battery information is gonna ping up to your device so you can see that live. And then it's also gonna give you a warning when they're close to running out of battery, which is a really nice feature if you wanna keep that data going and not have it run out halfway for a ride. Although it's a bonus if you have a Wahoo head unit, it's still gonna display all the power data on all the general big player head units out there. And interestingly, it's got Bluetooth connectivity as well as Amp Plus. So not many power units out there have got that dual capability to do both. So if you're struggling with connectivity and you need Bluetooth, these could be a right touch there because fundamentally a lot of them don't do that. There's nothing worse than having to fanny around with anything extra when you're going for rides. And a real bonus here is the fact that these auto calibrate. So you never have to calibrate your pedals before a ride and this also has temperature compensation, so it calibrates to the ambient temperature outside. So again, a real hassle-free system that's just gonna be easy to use and get you out there without having to think of anything extra. So I really like that as a feature. If you wanna see all the product information and all the images and all the extra stuff, then click on the link up here, over there, actually, and you can see all of the information there. They have an inbuilt cadence sensor, so if you've got one already, you won't need that. And if you haven't got one, well, that's just even more data than you can have pinging up to your head unit. Or if you're gonna be using it on Zwift or anything like that, it can ping up to that as well. So again, nice feature to have it. Some power pedals still don't have this. So again, just really nice to have it in there. And speaking of Zwift and indoor training, you'll probably have seen that Wahoo have just released their kicker roller system. Now that looks like a really interesting indoor trainer 
and these are basically designed to pair up with that system so it all runs on the same ecosystem again so if you're thinking about that these make the perfect combination for that indoor trainer too so these are looking to be a solid power pedal system but as well as that you get all the massive benefits of the speed play system alone we made a video covering all these benefits which i'll pop up on a link on the screen now but to cover them briefly, you obviously get the easy double entry system of a Speedplay pedal, which you don't get on any other road system out there. And it's almost as simple as snapping into a, like a mountain bike system where you can just slam your foot in and you're going to get that sort of instant access without having to look down and fiddle your cleat in when you're at the lights. This Speedplay system has got one of the lowest stack heights out there, which is I think 13 millimeters. So a lot of us might not notice this if we're not really caning it around corners, but if you're a crit racer, for example, and you are caning it around sharp corners and putting the power down as early as you can, then the chances of getting a pedal strike when doing that, which is the last thing you want when you're going around a corner quickly, is at its lowest when using this pedal system. So a nice touch there. Speed play pedals have a huge amount of fit adjustability. So if you've got a very custom bike fit or you've got dodgy knees, then you can't get better than a speed play pedal. So you've got a huge amount of float adjustability from the cleat, which is basically the angle of your foot before it unclips. You've got fore aft adjustability, you've got left and right, so you can really customize where the pedal sits on the bottom of your shoe and the angle of your knee and all this sort of stuff. Bike fitters love these pedals because they can fix a lot of problems for people with dodgy knees. And the reality is you'll know if you need one of these pedals. So if you're after a speed play with power, then obviously this is gonna be looking to be the right choice for you. Since Wahoo acquired speed play, they changed the bearing system and now they have a sealed bearing system, which is a no maintenance one. You used to have to pump grease through this little cap that they've actually covered up here now. So no maintenance, again, just adding to that, not having to fanny around before a ride things. If you ever had the old style of speed plays before Wahoo acquired them, you'll know that they had the metal bow tie effect and Wahoo have changed that system. So they've now got this more bottle cap design, which is just way more durable. You get better metal contact points to the cleat, which is gonna stop that rocking effects that the old speed play butterfly bow tie effect looked like hope that makes sense but essentially you've just got a more durable more stable pedal that doesn't wear out so quickly which is the last thing you want this thing to do as it's not exactly a cheap pedal is it the cleat system like before is black not yellow the yellow cleats on the old speed players were pretty disgusting in my personal opinion but black way more subtle goes with more stuff i prefer it it's just a color, doesn't make any difference, but yeah, I prefer it. The cleats still have that little golf aero ball effect, probably makes very marginal gains on that, but nice to see the way. They're nice to walk around in as cleats go, but the downside is that if you're using them in a muddy situation, you've gone for a pee in a bush, they do clog up with mud relatively badly compared to other cleats. So if you know you're gonna be using your road bike around mud, which I wouldn't advise in the first place, then not the best system. If you're just using it on tarmac and nipping to clean coffee shops, not hiking around a country field for whatever reason, then they should be absolutely fine. Now having electrics in them, they need to have a waterproof rating because let's face it, you're gonna probably wanna use these in wet weather, sadly. It's a sad reality, but you know, maybe some of you like it, I don't, but you know, enough of that. And you don't have to worry about that because these have got an IPX7 rating, which basically means they could be submerged under a meter of water for half an hour and they're still going to be all right up to that point. So any sort of torrential rain is just going to be absolutely fine. You just won't have to worry about these getting damaged from water. For the weight weenies of you out there, you probably want to weigh them. So we'll get the old trusty kitchen scales up and see what these come in at. So we'll just zero them off. So the pedals themselves, come in at 278 grams. And then with the cleats, they come in at roughly 360-ish grams. And then to be honest, if we're gonna do this accurately, we need to add a few bolts in there as well. So we'll do it properly and add a few bolts in there. So we'll add one set of bolts that you'd have to use with the plastic bags. I'm gonna keep them in the plastic bags, which is cheating. Th about 380 grams for the full setup with nothing else needed. So when you're comparing them to something like the Garmin Rally pedals that come in at about 326 grams without cleats, it's looking like a really similar weight setup. So nothing to really worry about there, even for the weight weenies. So we briefly touched on Q factor earlier, which is essentially how far the pedal sticks out from the crank. So how far the pedal is out, how wide your stance is on the bike, essentially. So the Powerlink Zero has a 55 millimeter Q factor, and that's also got that huge amount of adjustability that a speed pedal has. So 
Take that with a pinch of salt because there's a lot of adjustability you can have there. And to put that into perspective, a Shimano pedal, a standard one, has got a 52 millimeter Q factor and the long axle one, which is a longer spindle in the middle, has a 56 millimeter one. And it's worth just saying and putting out there that if you're thinking about getting a Favero Asio Maduo, that's got a pretty whopping 65 millimeter Q factor. So if you need a really extended axle, then that's a, it's a brilliant power system. But for fit wise, take that into account because if you don't want a wider stance, then having obviously a speed play is gonna give you way more adjustability and getting that fit just right. Now, if you're looking at buying a top end pedal power system, you're probably gonna be comparing these to the Garmin Rally system and they both have their real pros. So firstly, if you're really invested or you're completely happy and your fit's completely fine with a Shimano and look system, then the Garmin Rally pedal system is going to be a great choice. But obviously, and it's not even worth saying, but if you wanted a speed play power system, then obviously this is going to be the best system for you to go for that. They're both just about as accurate as each other in recording the power data, so there's no real difference there. They're both pretty expensive pieces of kit and they're both top in their class, but the Rally system is a couple of hundred pounds more for the dual-sided system. So realistically, you can save yourself a bit of money getting a speed play system, but to counter that, the Speedplay system comes with that 75 hour battery life, but the Rally system goes up to 120. So again, it's a bit of a swing and roundabout on that one. Again, if you want the ultimate battery life, the ultimate battery life would be to go for a crankbase system. Like the new Dura Ace one is, I think about 300 hours worth of power. But again, that's even more expensive. And you're talking about crankbase power, which isn't so easy to transfer and is a different topic in itself. But for pedal power, between those two, that's the sort of caveats between them both. So I hope that gives you a good roundup on what the new Power Link Zero, I forgot what it was called there, system has to offer. And I'd love to know what you guys think to it. Is it something you wanna buy? Is there anything they've missed? Is it something that's better than all the competition or something that you're just not gonna bother with? Please let me know in the comments because I'll be really interested to know. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.